Welcome to our weekly podcast show. We are here at the University of Rye Grand OSU South Center Studio Office. Each week we feature a Southern Ohio small business or a student, faculty, or administration person at the University of Rye Grand. We also feature program managers from the Ohio State University South Centers, Southern Ohio Community Economic and Development Programs, and community organizations and other special guests. Some of our special guests have included Pat why don't you share with us uh, Jason we've had a lot of great guests on our show uh, Becky Nesbitt with the Ohio State University Extension program she talked about community development and we, we've also had David Nadler David is with the Ohio Valley Bank in which he discussed small business uh, 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 lending practices uh, Bruce Valencourt manufacturing technology with TechSolve and of course Hayward Chappelle. Uh, Hayward has been with the uh, Southern Ohio Procurement Outreach Center which he talked about government procurement. Uh, one of the the uh, really good ones that came from Columbus, Ohio State was Jeff King in which he talked about leadership and management styles. You know Pat, speaking of David Nadler, I was up to uh, Jackson at the Rotary meeting yesterday and was talking to some of his colleagues that were lenders. Yes. And they actually listened to our show when David was on there. And they have been razzing him for the last couple weeks because he made the comment that he was keeping the lenders honest. So they were really saying that, uh, you know, hey, we are very honest. He just doesn't want to give loans. So <laughs> I thought that was really interesting that the community was actually listening to our show and they were razzing David about his, his uh, blog talk. You know, our mission is very simple. It's to promote the University of Rye Grand and its diverse educational programs, promote the Ohio State University South Centers and its many business technology programs, and finally promote Southern Ohio, a great place to live, learn, and enjoy life to its fullest. I am Jason Winters. I'm the director of the Center for Small Business Entrepreneurship here at the University of Rye Grand, and joining me are my co-host, Pat Dingle, business development specialist with the OSU Rio Collaboration. And today, our oh, I'm well, sorry, we, we also have Mike, uh, Mike Thompson. Mike Thompson is the uh, uh, instructional design and media services uh, director here at the University of Rio Grande, and Kim Roush. Kim is the uh, program assistant. <laughs> yeah, both of them are off camera there and hiding yes. quite well. <laughs> Uh, she's with the Ohio State University South Centers. So we have a really good collaboration going. So tell us, who's our special guest today, Pat? Uh, you know, it was, uh, I have been wanting to get Phyllis on our, our show for the last couple of months. And finally, uh, in a weak moment, she said yes. Uh, I've been, been uh, uh, wanting her to, wanted to feature her. Phyllis Mason is the Vice President of the Human Resources with the University of Rio Grande. Uh, she's going to be talking about management, management styles of the Generation X and Generation Y. Uh, Phyllis has a, a lot of background in the, both the classroom and in the administration here at the University of Rio Grande. And she has been uh, very knowledgeable in stimulating discussions about management and safety styles and it's just a pleasure having her on our show. And Pat, she also was not aware that we were going to switch formats and go to video on her either. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I probably wouldn't have said yes. I know that. Uh, and it was a weak moment. We were judging some uh, students on their um, marketing mm -hmm styles or the things they had to do for marketing when they were here one day and it was just like oh okay I'll do that and it's like wait a minute what did I say <laughs> oh, okay. no uh, I am Phyllis Mason I've been here at the University for 27 years and I've been in the human resource office all those years so I've seen veterans baby boomers generation X and generation Y employees uh, I also uh, grew up in Gallup Police. I graduated from a local high school. I have a two-year degree in sociology from our Grand Community College, a four-year degree, degree in uh, management um, from uh, the university, uh, from the business school, and also I have an MBA from Wright State University. So I've uh, seen, it, seen uh, education as a non-traditional student. Uh, so I have seen uh, X and Y generations in the classroom. I taught uh, when in the School of Business, I taught human resources, labor relations, and uh, business uh, organization and things like that. So I know uh, their styles of working. Um, I 
in the community why I am uh, the president of the Galpolis Garden Club, so I like Fantastic. to make the community pretty. And uh, we have in our own building, we have uh, uh, tried to make our building the prettiest on campus. I'm not saying that it is, but we're trying to. And also, uh, I've been involved with the Animal Welfare League in Gallia County for a long time. Um, I love animals, and um, I, I really do think that uh, there's a lot to be said for the shelter and how it's going. So. Uh -huh. So, so you have been involved in a lot of different community, as well as uh, with the university and with the, the students. So I would imagine that you have, have seen a lot of different unique ways of handling people, because isn't that what management's about? Is management is about managing, handling, conf uh, handling conf confrontations, uh, motivating, uh, seeing what they like, and the difference in what um, the baby boomers want and what the X and Y generation want is completely different. Um, X and Y want to be flexible. They don't, they want to work from home. They want to, they're into immediate gr instant gratification. Uh, they want to not be, have to wait to their appraisal time to get that bonus that you want to give them. They want it as soon as the job's done. Um, they also want, they're smart. Yes, they're they are. They're very smart. They're creative, and you might have to focus that creativity sometimes, but they are creative. They don't like to be on committees. They want to work alone, or they want to be in charge of the committee and not have a whole bunch of subcommittees and everything else, because they want to get it done. Baby boomers will committee things to death. There'll be subcommittees, there'll be committees, there'll be task force, there'll be a million things. They'll get it done but they're not as quick to get it done as the X and Y generation. Well, isn't it, isn't it true, Phyllis, that uh, baby boomers, there's really some subcategories. Uh, you know, I happen to be a baby boomer, uh, uh, and some of the, the subcategories can be uh, keep up with the Joneses or uh, the beatnik generation <laughs> or uh, the... the uh, conscious revolution maybe you know I um, you know we, we all sort of fluctuate and I'm not sure if I'm a keep up with the Joneses or if I'm a beatnik well I think I'm past keeping up <laughs> with the Joneses it didn't work and I don't know if I'm a beatnik or not but I do know that it does uh, anybody that is a baby boomer that is a manager has a lot of it has a challenge as to how they're going to handle the newer gen the newer generations um, if I say to you, I'm your supervisor and I'm a baby boomer and you're a baby boomer and I say, we need to get this report done. You think, oh, that means I need to get it done right now. She's given me a command. I need to do that right now. I say to Jason, who may be a generation Xer, I am. We need to get this report done. And he says, oh, she just made an observation. We need to get this report done. I don't know if I need to do it right now, so I won't. You know, there. it's just the way you communicate, the way they understand. Huh. So if you want Jason to do it, you need to tell him we need to get this done today. And then he will. Oh, well, that's, that's very <laughs> interesting. I think that's a really important part to make. You know, so many times we get involved with all the different generations and, you know, we, we pick out, we're quick to pick out maybe their flaws. But there's not really flaws. They're just difference in work attitudes, mm -hmm. work ethics, um, like you mentioned very smart um, we're not downgrading anybody it's just the fact that they have different ways of performing the tasks that need to be done and the important part is how do managers deal with that some do it quite well some don't would you liken it to the way men and women act I mean some people like to say oh men, guys are better, Boy, you women ever, are better. Uh, but point. they are different equal but different but would you manage men and women differently would you, you talk would, to them you would different? have to Women are more nurturing, more uh, taking you by the hand, uh, those kinds of things where a man might say, get it done and get it done now. And if you don't, that's it. Baby boomers, take them by the hand. Generation Xers probably won't. I mean, it's not that, it's not bad. It's just that that's the way they expect. They like flexibility. They want to, want to get it done. They want to, um, get on with their lives. They don't want their lives to be completely about work. Baby boomers have made their lives, their, their work their lives. So um, they work hard, they work long, they want to be rewarded. 
uh, but they wait for the reward. Xers and Yers don't want to wait for it. And that's not bad. I'm not saying that's bad. It's just they don't want to wait for the reward. They want it when they do the project. What you mentioned that your undergraduate was in psychology, yeah. and that comes in real handy because <laughs> that's exactly what we're talking about here. It's different values. You know, what values are instilled upon the individual people, and that has a lot to do with how they behave in the workplace. Kim, are you a Generation X or a Y? Or? I am a Generation X for the most part. Um, tail end of Baby Boomer. Uh, yeah. So, kind of an in um, that creative issue and then being able to work from home, I definitely see myself in that area. So, so you're born in like mid 60s? 63. Okay, yeah, that's everybody. where I'm at. <laughs> and, and so, you're a Generation X too? Well, I think it's the end of the uh, baby boomers because I kind of respect authority I don't know if it's because I went to the military if somebody tells me they want me in their office I'm there I mean I just beat feet right over there and you know do what I need to do where I've seen other people you know of the most current generation say I need you in my office like yeah I'm gonna get some lunch and uh, uh, I need to do something then I'll be over like uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and now, see, Pat, I, I'm just on the tail end of the baby boomers and just missed the baby boomers. I'm one of the first Xers. And, and I, I can see myself in what he's talking about because I, I still respect authority, but I have always been raised to question authority. And I don't know why. It's just something that comes natural to me. I always question authority. Why would they want that done? I'm not going to disrespect someone in authority, but I always want to know why. Well, well, see, I I learned quickly. I, you know, my my wife and I have been married for thirty eight <laughs> years. I learned quickly yes, who dear. is in charge. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> to respect authority. Right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think uh, uh, the the younger generation, the X and the Ys, they seem to the baby boomers to not be as loyal to their company because they're moving up all the time. They're moving into different positions, different companies. If it's me first. At, huh? It's me first. Me, it's all about me. And that I'm not saying that's bad, but that's it is a challenge for, for me. It's a challenge. It's like, well, what about Rio Grande? What about Ohio? Well, no, it's about me. And I need to prepare for my future. If, I want to, if they want to take a cruise, they'll just take a cruise i might have saved for months and weeks yeah. and years to take a cruise They'll like you're still on your probationary I know. period i've been here <laughs> 20, i know <laughs> yeah you're still on your probationary period you can't go well why why yeah. it's it the rule oh, i don't like it really. <laughs> well the, the new generation that that is coming out what, what i always refer to as the shadow boomers the shadow mm -hmm. boomers were mm -hmm. were raised by the generation y's or the no. Generation X's? X. The X's? X's. Okay. Um, th they seem to be in a totally different world uh, <laughs> that I'm used to. And I, that's not good and that's not bad. It's just I find it's it different. rather... It's different. And how do you manage um, th those individuals? You know, what are some of the key key things we should, as people, be aware of? I think we definitely need to make sure that when we communicate with them, they understand what we're saying. Um, texting uh, logo is not something that I do very much, and I don't know how to do it, and I don't understand it. But, I mean, LOL could mean anything to me. Uh, but we need to make sure that they understand what we want. If I tell Jason, we really need to get that report done for the board, which is going to meet on such and such a day, because, and then he he'll, he won't have to ask me why. He'll know why. Um, I do think that uh, quite often we think just because they have piercings that we may not have, they have tattoos that we may not have. I uh, noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they have resumes that are very short where uh, they've worked several places since they've been out of school. They have an education. They're very smart. They want to, um, they want to do well. But we don't give them a chance. We think, oh, they're, look at that. They wore flip-flops to work. The first woman that wore flip-flops to a job interview, I thought I was going to die. But that's just what she was a young lady, and that's what she wore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're casual. They like fun. So what we have to do to manage them is make things fun. Um, the uh, Seattle-based business that did the fish theory, 
<laughs> where the worst place on earth to work was a, a fish place where they were selling fish. They had uh, a theory where every day it's your uh, decision what you're going to have that day. Are you going to be smiley? Are you going to be sad? Are you going to be grouchy or whatever? And they threw fish around. I, I, I saw them. I really did see them. They were throwing fish everywhere. And that's a terrible job, but they made it fun. And so businesses who are too strict and won't have fun. Um, I think in the past we've had some uh, times when they didn't want us to have fun. Come here, work, pro produce whatever you're supposed to do, produce, and that's it. Now if you have fun every now and then, and motiv that motivates the people, uh, you reward them with a, that. I like to have a day off. Uh, Jason wants money. <laughs> you know, but that's just the difference. So no, no, I want a day off with money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're entitled to that. That's right. <laughs> I think some of it was also the way people were raised. Uh, yeah, very much when so. I was raised, it was almost at the end of you know, kids should be maybe seen but not heard. You know, yeah, right. the the kids had to try and live up to something that the parents wanted. You had to please them. In the 80s, it, it flip-flopped. Parents now have to entertain the kids. Now the kids are the center of my life. Everything revolves around that. And, you know, when I was growing up, I followed my parents and took that example. And now if you look on Facebook and other things like that, it's like uh, I hear parents saying, my kids are my biggest inspiration. Like, really? Is that backwards? You know? See, I, I so find it's flip flop, mm -hmm. and so right. that's where they yes. get the attitude that the world revolves around me because it has. Well, Mike, it's very true. I mean, that gets back to the idea of personalities and values. Um, it really gets back to the idea that your personality comes out of two aspects. One is is nature or natural. You know, you inherit it from your parents, so you're born of of what they are. But the other part is the nurturing part, and that's from your your socioeconomic background. Uh, your family history, the people you're hanging out with, your college scene that you're in. So you're not only born with that set of values and that set of ideas, but also the environment in which you're living is influencing your life and is changing your life. So that's going to impact who you are, and that's why we see these shifts in your generation. You have your gen generation Y that, that are growing Media now. and the games right. and all that kind of they're, stuff. They're really, they're really a product of Gen X, and Gen X is a product of the baby boomers and so forth. Um, so that's where we're getting this, and it all gets back to that. Just like in my day, the old guy. <laughs> we had to wait until, you know, the Christmas special or, you know, Frosty the Snowman came on one time during the whole year. And now you can just get it on YouTube or buy the DVD and watch it whenever you want to. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. It serves me and my schedule, just like the DVR. Quick question I have for Phyllis: um, Is this sort of a just an American culture or Mer uh, the America's culture? Do you have you seen uh, similar differences in, let's say, third world countries or over in Europe or or in uh, some of the Eastern countries? I I think that the generation differences are everywhere. Um, maybe a little bit more pronounced here but I, I think it's everywhere. I've talked with some of the students who are from England and Wales and I, the Puerto Rican ones that I can talk with and you know I think it's everywhere. I really do. I think it's uh, um, they're all, the kids are all the same. They're getting their games and their emails and their texting and all that. They're they're ahead of us, uh, not ahead of us, but they're. They, I think it's the same everywhere. Um, baby boomers, talking about the family, they were in the nucleus nuclear family. Mom, dad, sometimes grandparents, uh, extended families. Baby boomer or Xers, they were latchkey kids. Uh, mom and dad made them up, made up for what the time they weren't there. They bought them off. They gave them brand name clothes, so they're into brand name clothes. They, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, why uh, is more like baby boomers in that they're smart. They've had economic training from the time they were in high school. They know they need a 401k. They know they need an IRA or whatever. They know that kind of thing. So they're doing that. They're they're uh, leaning a little bit back toward what the baby boomers were as far as those kinds of things are concerned. 
Pat, I would have to agree with Phyllis. So I think across cultures, there is a difference in generations, but I think it's more pronounced here in the U.S. simply because as a society, we're very indi individualistic. Uh, it's all about us. And I mean, let's face it, we are all about ourselves and our families. And that's how we as a society are. If you look at the Japanese culture, they're not very individualistic. They're very collectivism. You know, when they go to work, it's all about the business. What can we do to cement the business and the family of the business or the family at home? You know, they're not real individualistic. So when you look at our culture, being individualistic, I think it's more pronounced, these different generational ticks or traits or whatever we want to pronounce on ourselves. Hmm. I, I, I find that rather interesting. I would agree. Yeah, the Oriental cultures more serve the collective. They don't know or have a lot of the concept of free time because, you know, during in one of the uh, master's classes, we they asked them, you know, it was a group of Chinese, what's your favorite book? You know, thinking that they would come up with whatever book they read on their leisure. And they immediately started going to what textbook they liked best. Well, I like this chemistry book that I had. <laughs> like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> We're talking about Harry Potter and stuff like that. <laughs> D uh, it, coupled with that, Phyllis, and Mike, Mike was asking a really good question. The roles that we have both in male and female. Uh, yes, I'm a baby boomer. Uh, I was taught that the men went outside, killed the dinosaur, brought it home, <laughs> and then the wives were the ones with their white gloves. Cooked the. The good wife had the meal ready when you came home. That's right. That so <laughs> they cooked it up, put it in the pan, and work. Now they work too. So yeah. they have to so do all me, that. Let me get this straight. They had the dinosaur cooked before you got it home to her? <laughs> yeah. Is that how that works? <laughs> and they didn't even have a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. Well, I think women have, through the, through the years, been expected to do as much as men do with, of course, less pay. And uh, only recently have men also taken on home chores to do. Um, I don't know how people go to as many ball games as these kids have these days or dance recitals or whatever they're doing with, and keep the home fires burning because there's just so much going on. So uh, women are different to manage. Women, uh, I have a book in my office called How to Get to the Corner Office, and it's not by crying. <laughs> and it's not it's not by demanding it's by showing that you can do it i mean women h work a little harder than men to do it but they can get the same jobs done and um women make good managers um they nurture <laughs> yes very much so. the, it, it is collaboration uh one of the the key elements that many many women um excel in versus some of the older men when I say collaboration, I'm talking about uh, having team meetings and, and uh, you know, when, when, when I was growing up, we assigned tasks. Jason, you did this. Mike, you did that. Kim, you did this. We all pulled those things together and we all came back. Now it seems like in the management style, okay, let's all gather around and let's put forth a Get a consensus effort. and then yes. all add to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because I want to have a say in where everything's going to, and maybe that came out of some of the Japanese influence to the uh, auto industry. Good point. That's a good point. I have another question for Phyllis. You know, right now in our economy, I mean, you know, you got a lot of people are going back to work because they haven't saved for retirement. You've got uh, baby boomers looking for jobs. You've got Gen Xers looking for jobs, and you got Y looking for jobs. And not every job is likened to all three of those. How important is it to take into consideration what type of person that is that's applying for the job for the specific job responsibilities? It's very important. If I'm a, a baby boomer, I'm going to like the hierarchy. I'm going to, not that I wouldn't respect, but I know the pecking order. I know who I need to go to and that Gen Xers don't particularly like that. So if I have a business that is all vice presidents, they're not going to like that as well as if I have just a, a team and they can do what they want to do. So I think you really need to take it into consideration because they're not going to stay. They don't have the loyalty to businesses. And I'm not saying that's bad, but they don't have the loyalty that I might stay as a baby boomer until I retire just because 
I think uh, that's what I should do. I like the company. It's okay. The, the bad things are not as good as, not as bad as the good things. So, but gener uh, the younger generations, they won't stay. They're, they're looking for moving on. So if you have a business where um, your projects are short and you don't care if they move on, then that's fine. But if you're going, if you have long projects and you want them, you know, to stay, you definitely look need to look at a. I'm not saying necessarily an older person because all I hear from kids, uh, from the students, are, well, all I want is experience, and I don't have any experience. How are you supposed to get experience if they won't hire me? Gee, I said that. <laughs> Fifty years ago, I said that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and it's it's not changed. Nothing's changed. But now they really do want the experience, so that's why I think the internships and those kinds of things are good, because they can go into the uh, uh, workplace, see what it's all about, really, and uh, put that on their resume. They've had some experience. And if you'd have a job opening for someone that that needs to do a lot of traveling, that uh, is good with teleconferencing or needs a teleconference, you know, and somebody that that it has to work from home, then maybe a better fit would not be the uh, baby boomer, mm -hmm. but might be a Gen Xer mm -hmm. or possibly even a Gen Y. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we have uh, only a couple more minutes and I've got to ask you, uh, uh, Phyllis, uh, my, my undergraduate degree is in philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, where would we be without philosophers? But it, I, I noticed that right before the, the podcast, we were talking about a, a little bit of uh, religion and philosophies and has things changed that you have seen um, from the generation X and generation Y the personal beliefs uh, in my my uh, generation religion was incorporated into the personal work ethic and things of that nature what what's your take on that like Mike said, when we were talking a little while ago, I do think religion has uh, started to um, become more and more uh, a part of the life of the students here, and that w they're going to be the employees. I uh, hope that um, I don't see it, I don't see this ha that it would happen here that you would be discriminated against because of your religion. But I do think people are spending more time thinking about the good things to do, paying forward, uh, complimenting. Um, those kinds of things so that they can uh, just make themselves feel better and if you feel good about something you did at work then you're gonna you're gonna stay and you're gonna like your job you know Pat since we mixed talked a little bit about religion uh, talk a little bit about diversity you know that's one thing I really enjoy working at the University of yes Rodrigan. we've got agree. several faculty members administration yes. members they all come from different yes. backgrounds uh, different ethnicities brings um, the religions. flavors yes and, and the it's the opinions that they bring to the table are so diverse that really leads to some interesting discussions um, some good problem-solving techniques and it's really nice to have that diversity in the workplace and and really we all get along pretty well we do um, I don't always understand some of the religions, but mm -hmm. they're willing to sit down with you and go over what they yeah. do. And yes. uh, if you know if the door's closed, maybe they're praying, or it maybe they're be. whatever they're doing. So yeah. you know, it's just, I think it's really uh, I, okay. I agree. Well, we only have about a a minute left. And a half. A minute and a half left. Is there anything that you wish we would have asked you? That any any thirty seconds worth of uh, information you'd like to share with us? I really do think that supervisors, um, no matter what generation they're, they are in, need to have continual training on mm -hmm. what the, stu what the uh, employees want, how to manage them. You can't just assume that today because we're doing it a certain way. I can't make, a 45 year old person cannot make a 25 year old person think like they do. So you have got to have continual training, and, and I, I think if, if a company's smart, that's what they're going to do. And I think some of the training should, people should look at University of Rio Grande. I do too. Absolutely. <laughs> We've got some actually courses we can put them in. And if, if there are some others like OSU. So we have, uh, uh, we want to thank you very much, Phyllis, for, for coming on our, our, our show. Uh, we hope you come back. Well, thank you very much. And maybe since I've made my debut, I'll uh, do okay and I'll come back. <laughs> Great. So, Great. Pat, we got about uh, 15, 20 seconds left. Who's going to join us next week? Uh, we, we have a psychologist, 
who is also an attorney and he's going to talk about bankruptcy. John McHenry, Dr. John McHenry or Mr. Depends upon what you have. We hope you come back and listen again. <laughs>